The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant has six reactors that were all built in the 1970s. They're old designs, but they were considered pretty safe. On March 11th, a magnitude 9 earthquake struck off the coast of Japan, and the earthquake was obviously bad, but the tsunami it created was what really caused trouble at the plant. Right after the earthquake, the reactors went into emergency shutdown, and they needed to be cooled. That job was being done by generators, and the tsunami came in and washed around the reactor buildings and just knocked out all those emergency systems. So without the cooling systems, the three reactors running at the time of the quake began to heat up. Plant workers scrambled to flood them with seawater, but it took too long, and it appears that the reactors partially melted down. Now that means that some of the fuel inside got out of its normal configuration and possibly settled at the bottom of the reactor. The process generates a lot of hydrogen gas, and that sparked a series of massive explosions at the plant over the next few days. Now, after the explosions, um, all that mattered was keeping these reactors very cool. Japan's military and civilian authorities did really the only thing they could at the time, which was spray water. Over the last month, the water spraying has gotten a little more systematic, and damage assessments have begun. It hasn't been easy because the radiation levels are just too high for workers to go in and look at what's happened. So what they've had to resort to is unmanned helicopters that can sort of provide an aerial view of the damage to the buildings that house the reactors. Remote cranes have also given us a look at the tops of these buildings. But what reactor operators really need to do is take a look inside. And to do this, they've turned to robots used by the U.S. military. The robots first entered Units 1 and 3 in early April. What they found wasn't particularly encouraging. As we suspected, the radiation levels are still very high. So basically, these reactors are going to have to be cooled remotely, at least for the next six months or so. The cooling creates another problem, because water that goes into the core comes out contaminated with radioactive material. It flows out through broken pipes and cracks, and it can eventually reach the ocean. The Tokyo Electric Power Company has spent a lot of time trying to seal the leaks one way or another. Some of their techniques have been pretty crude. I mean, they've just filled this pit with concrete. TEPCO is also planning on pumping the contaminated water into temporary storage tanks and at least trying to process some of it to clean it up. Over the next few months, the damaged reactors will also have to be covered to prevent radiation from spreading. TEPCO says it wants to build a temporary cover over the site. It could look like this one that's currently being built for Chernobyl in the Ukraine, although there it's taking well over a decade to install. Up until now, people on the site have just been focused on keeping these reactors under control. It's been a 24-hour job, and they haven't had much of an opportunity to get beyond that. But ultimately, they're going to have to figure out a way to get the fuel out and take the reactors apart. At the moment, nobody seems to have an answer for how to do this, but we're likely to see more ideas in the weeks and months ahead. For Nature Video, I'm Jeff Brumfield.